Hello and welcome to St. George Maple Ridge for this, our online service. Thank you so much for joining us and spending part of your weekend worshipping with us. Wherever you're watching, we'd love it if you could hit the like button and do connect with others in the comments as we go through the service. As we begin, let us pray. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We're going to sing our opening song, How Great Thou Art. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands hath made i see the stars i hear the mighty thunder thy path throughout the universe displayed then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down, from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation, and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then i shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my god how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. How great thou art, how great thou art. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. 
On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in, in thought, thought, word, and, and deed, by what, by what we, we have done and by what we have left undone. We have, have not, not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, we have, have not, not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and, and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, your Son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair, that we may trust in you alone, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading today is from the letter of James. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations. Greetings. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all that they do. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wild flower, for the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even when they go about their business. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. starting the month of August with a new sermon series. And so over the next few weeks, what we'll be doing is having a look at the book of James. If you remember a few weeks back, David suggested that if you're looking to read the Bible, um, you might want to start at the back because at the back, you'll find a lot of the shorter letters. James is one of these. It's five chapters long and in my Bible, which has large type, it takes up seven pages. So you can knock it off pretty quick. And since we're going to be talking about this book over the next few weeks, you might want to read it over a few times. 
there's not really a lot for us to say about James himself. Traditionally, this book was attributed to James, the brother of Jesus, one of the early leaders in the church in Jerusalem. But there's not a lot of scholarly consensus about that. But all we really need to know about James is that he was a follower of Jesus. Now, regardless of who James was, we don't actually read this letter much in church. When we're doing our readings or our sermon series, we tend to look at the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the writings which tell us about Jesus and his life and his ministry and his teachings. And if we're not looking at one of the Gospels, we might be looking maybe at one of Paul's letters, you know, Corinthians or Romans or Thessalonians, because Paul talks a lot about faith in Christ. So it makes sense as a Christian church, we want to look at those books which teach us about Christ, either his life or how he works into our faith. We want to explore and deepen our life in Christ. But if you read James' letter and you heard the first part, you'll notice James barely talks about Jesus at all. In the entire letter, he only mentions Jesus a few times. Now, just because James doesn't talk about Jesus doesn't mean that Jesus doesn't control the entire message. The book may not mention Jesus overtly, but everything in this book is written through the lens of a follower of Jesus. Let's have a look at this. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. James acknowledges that being a follower of Jesus is not going to be all sunshine and roses. Life in itself will not always be easy, but that's not something that should be discouraging us. No, James says this is an opportunity for celebration. The testing of our faith is something that will bring maturity. Our faith must be tested for us to learn, uh, to grow and develop. Faith isn't the flavor of the month something to abandon when it's no longer fun or easy. We know that to grow in anything, not just faith, there needs to be challenge. There needs to be mistakes and failure. If anything is worth having, it's worth persevering. I've heard a story um, that used to be shared in our Taekwondo class about a man who found a butterfly coming out of its cocoon and he helped it. And the wings never develop properly because in order to strengthen those wings, the butterfly needs to fight to get out of that cocoon to fully become what it's meant to be. And that's an example of our faith as well. And even our church in this time of pandemic are facing challenges we've not seen before. We've had to find new ways to still be the body of Christ, to find ways to gather together. For some people, this is challenging. Without companionship, without communion, to still try and hold fast to their faith. For others in leadership, putting on a Sunday service has taken more time than ever before but we still find ways to persevere because this is something worth having. In other areas of life, still keeping on with the pandemic and trying to keep infections down, we've seen a rise over the last few days as people face fatigue, tired of trying to social distance, tired of always trying to wash their hands, really wanting to connect with other people and falling short in, in protective measures. We find ourselves tired, but keeping ourselves healthy 
as a whole, as individuals, is something worth striving for. Keeping together as a church is something worth striving for. And James reminds us that those things are worth persevering for. And it's not for some reward at the end. He doesn't say, do this, persevere, and you'll have eternal life, or your place in heaven, or be one of Christ's chosen. The reward is maturity of faith that secure knowledge of salvation of our place in the kingdom. The reward is not at the end of the journey. The reward is the journey itself as we move towards maturity and faith. That daily living of our faith, that is the joy. Now, in many ways, this teaching of James reflects the parable of the sower, one of Jesus' teachings. In that, if a seed just grows up quickly, it dies. It never matures. It never develops and it never bears fruit. James is reminding us of that. Trials and difficulties are meant to test us. They are meant to help us mature. They are meant to help us to learn and grow and bear fruit. So, just as James says, don't let the hard times discourage us. We should rejoice that we live in a time where we can learn to be strong and where we can learn to persevere. He's reminding us that what Jesus taught us through the parable is that growth in faith is a process and it takes time and proper growth. So now let's have a look at a next section here. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. But the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wildflower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. Now, does that sound familiar? You may have heard Jesus talk about something similar. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you because of the Son of Man. That you can find in Luke if you want to look it up. It is chapter 6 and it starts at verse 20. Sometimes known as one version of the Beatitudes. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. Well, James, just like Jesus, is reminding us that our material circumstances are not what's important. Our place in the world shouldn't be our focus. Of course, we live in the world, but that's not what should concern us. What should concern us is our place in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus, be the center, be my souls, be my life, Jesus. Jesus, be the center. Be my hope, be my song, Jesus. Be the fire in my heart, be the wind in these 
great sails be the reason that I live, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, be my vision, be my path, be my guide, Jesus, be the fire in my heart, be the wind in these sails. Be the reason that I live, Jesus, Jesus. Be the fire in my heart. Be the wind in these sails. Be the reason that I live, Jesus, Jesus. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer and intercession, for those people you know specifically in need of prayer, please feel free to offer them before God. Let us pray for our needs and for the needs of others, following the pattern which Jesus gave us when he taught us to pray to God our Father. Through our love of the great outdoors, through our care for animals, through our respect for property and tools, Father, hallowed be your name. On our farms and in our homes, in our colleges and schools, where machinery is made and where policy is planned. Father, your kingdom come. By our seeking your guidance, by our keeping your commandments, by our living true to our consciences, Father, your will be done. For the millions who live in poverty and hunger, for our own needs, and the requirements of our neighbors, by cooperation, sympathy, and generosity, give us today our daily bread. Because we have broken your commandments, doing what we ought not to do, and neglecting what we ought to do, forgive our sins. If any have injured us by injustice, double dealing, or exploitation, we forgive those who sin against us. When prosperity lulls us into false security or hard times prompt us to despair, when success makes us boastful or failure makes us bitter, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In the assurance of faith, in the confidence of hope, in the will to serve, Help us to love Christ as Lord and our neighbor as ourselves. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We are the body of Christ. By one spirit, we were baptized into one body. Keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. We are bound by the love of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please take this time to share a greeting of peace with those in your family 
and also feel free to email or text someone in our community. And now we take a few moments to offer ourselves and our gifts to God. As we listen to the next song, there is an opportunity to give to the work of the church, either on the website or by sending a text message to the number on the screen. Let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power uh, and the glory, forever, forever and yeah. ever. Amen. Just a reminder that today, August the 2nd, there will be no in-person worship at St. George. Next week, August the 9th, we will again be offering two opportunities to gather together for worship. Once at 9 
at morning worship and again at 1015 for a family friendly interactive gathering. To help us plan for these services, the welcome team would appreciate it if you registered online beforehand. This allows us to save you a seat and it also saves you time when you arrive. The registration form only allows spaces for 50 people. So if you haven't registered and you would like to take your chance, you can show up on Sunday morning. And as long as there is space, you can join us once the welcome team registers you. Our morning service will be live streamed and available online on St. George website, as well as on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel starting at 9 a.m. next Sunday. If you can't join in live, this service will be posted on our page and channel for you to catch up at a later time. For the month of August and into September, we will be looking at the Book of James in a series called Faith for Life. The Lord God Almighty is our Father. He loves, loves us, us and, and tenderly, tenderly cares, cares for us. us. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior. He, he has, has redeemed, redeemed us and, and will defend, defend us to the, to the end. end. The Lord, the Holy Spirit, is among us. He will, he will lead, lead us in God's, God's holy way. way. To God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be praise and glory today and forever. Amen. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and those you love and pray for this day and evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.